I'm Vincent van Gogh, and was born on March 30, 1853, in Grootzunder, Netherlands. It is great country. Yes? Now I will show you my house. Here it is. After 1973, it is used as a museum. My dad, Theodorus van Gogh, was an austere country minister. And my mom, Anna Cornelia, was a moody artist, whose love of nature, drawing and watercolors was transferred to me. At my age 15, our family was struggling financially. And... Van Gogh have to help us. We can't pay his expenses. How will you explain this to him? Somehow. He must leave school and start working. I got a job at my Uncle Cornelli's art dealership, a firm of art dealers in The Hague. By this time, I was fluent in French, German and English, as well as my native Dutch. In June of 1873, I was transferred to the Grupal Gallery in London. There, I fell in love with English culture. I visited art galleries in my spare time. I also, fell in love, with my landlady's daughter, Eugenie Lawyer. I wanted to marry her. Will you marry me? I love you so much. No. When she rejected my marriage proposal, I suffered a breakdown. I threw away, all my books, except for the Bible, and devoted my life to God. I became angry with people, at work, telling customers, not to buy, the worthless art, and was eventually fired. Then I taught in a Methodist boys school, and also preached to the congregation. Hoping to become a minister, I prepared to take the entrance exam, to the School of Theology, in Amsterdam. After a year of studying diligently, I refused to take the Latin exams, calling Latin a dead language of poor people and was subsequently denied entrance. In the fall of 1880, I decided to move to Brussels and become an artist. Though I had no formal art training, my brother Theo offered to support me financially. I began taking lessons on my own. My art helped me stay emotionally balanced. In 1885, I began work on what is considered to be my first masterpiece, Potato Eaters. Theo, who by this time living in Paris, believed the painting would not be well received in the French capital, where Impressionism had become the trend. Nevertheless I decided to move to Paris, and showed up at Theo's house uninvited. In March 1886, Theo welcomed me into his small apartment. In Paris, I first saw Impressionist art, and I was inspired by the color and light. I began studying with Henry de Toulouse-Lautrec, Camille Pissarro, and others. To save money, me and my friends posed for each other, instead of hiring models. In December 1888, I was living in Arles, France, and found myself feeling sick, and strange. It became apparent that, in addition to suffering from physical illness, my psychological health was declining. Theo was worried, and he offered Paul Gagwin money, to go watch over me. Within a month, we were arguing constantly, and one night, Gagwin walked out. I followed him, and when Gagwin turned around, he saw that I was holding a razor in my hand. I cut my ear. The police found me in my room the next morning, and admitted me to the Hotel du Hospital. I lost lots of blood. Theo arrived on Christmas Day to see me. The doctors assured him that I would be taken good care of. And on January 7, 1889, I was released from the hospital. I remained, however, alone and depressed. For hope, I turned to painting and nature, but could not find peace and was hospitalized again. I would paint at the Yellow House during the day and return to the hospital at night. I decided to move to the St. Paul de Massal Asylum after the people of Arles signed a petition saying that I was dangerous. On May 8, 1889, I began painting in the hospital gardens. In November 1889, I was invited to exhibit my paintings in Brussels. I sent six paintings, including irises and starry night. Around this time, Theo sold my The Red Vineyards, painting for 400 francs. Also, Dr. Paul Gachet agreed to take me as his patient. I moved to Overs, 
and rented a room. But in July of that year, I committed suicide. Theo, who was suffering from syphilis and weakened by my death, died six months after me in a Duchess Island. I completed more than 2,100 works, consisting of 860 oil paintings and more than 1,300 watercolors, drawings and sketches. Several of my paintings now rank among the most expensive in the world. Irises sold for a record $53.9 million, and my portrait of Dr. Gatte sold for $82.5 million. A few of my most well-known artworks include, Starry Night. I painted the Starry Night in the asylum, where I was staying in St. Remy, the year before my death. I wrote to Theo, the following sentences, This morning, I saw the countryside, from my window, a long time before sunrise, with nothing, but the morning star, which looked very big. Sunflowers. I painted two series of sunflowers in Arles, France, four between August and September 1888 and one in January 1889. The versions and replicas are debated among art historians. Self-portrait. Over the course of 10 years, I created more than 43 self-portraits, as both paintings and drawings. I wrote to my sister the followings. I am looking for a deeper likeness than that obtained by a photographer. Followings to my brother, people say, and I am willing to believe it, that it is hard to know yourself. But it is not easy to paint yourself, either. The portraits painted by Rembrandt, are more than a view of nature, they are more like a revelation. Some of my other famous paintings are, irises. Cafe Terrace at Night The Yellow House Wheat Field with Crows Starry Night Over the Rhone At Eternity's Gate Bedroom in Arles The Garden of Asylum Scowl of a Skeleton Sunset at Mont Major. Prisoners exercising. Road with Cypress and Star. How did Van Gogh die? I was distraught about my future because. In May of that year, Theo had visited and spoke to me about needing to be stricter with my finances. I took that to mean he was no longer interested in selling my art. On July 27, 1890, I went out to paint in the morning carrying a loaded pistol and shot myself in the chest, but the bullet did not kill me. I was found bleeding in my room. I was taken to a nearby hospital and my doctors sent for Theo, who arrived to find me sitting up in bed and smoking. We spent the next couple of days talking together, and then I asked him to take me home. On July 29, 1890, I died in the arms of him. I was 37 years old. I struggled with mental illness, and remained poor and virtually unknown throughout my life.